In this second movie of the camera movement, we're building out our scene to be 3D camera movement friendly. We've put in the ground and we're starting to import some items to work with before we start moving the camera through the scene. We've got our buildings in, we move them back in Z space, we have scaled the layer, but before we fine tune that, we're going to go ahead and bring in some additional content. We'll go to File, Import, come down here to Adobe Illustrator file again, and back in the Working Files folder for special effects, you can go ahead and grab the Mount Fuji file. And we'll pop that in, and again that comes in right at the same size and the right place as Windsor is. So we're going to need to make this substantially larger and push this back quite a ways in space. So let's do that with our Layer Adjustment Tools. First we'll select the Layer Translation Tool, and I'll give the Z depth here, the distance away from the camera, a value of something like negative 40. We'll make this quite a ways back. So it's behind the building, back in fact so far that we can't see it. So the next thing we'll need to do then is to change the scale of the layer. I'll highlight our scale tool and again in these values right here I'm going to select a value of 20 for X, 20 for Y, and 20 for Z and that really won't make much of a difference to us but it's still not quite large enough so I'll go ahead and grab the corner of the scaling handle and simply make this a little bit bigger. Obviously it's in front of the building but it's only in front of the building because the layer says it is. Let's move Mount Fuji behind the city buildings. Now we see those and if we want them to recede further into the distance we can move it behind the grass. So the altitude of the grass or the Y value of the grass becomes very important now. Mount Fuji is simply a little too low and the grass is terminating right against it. So let's come back to our layer adjustment tool and I'll simply drag up this until we can see it in the distance. I'll come back to our city buildings layer here. I'll use the keyboard shortcut, the number two, and we'll go ahead and scale the buildings up a little bit larger. And in fact, I'll move those back a little bit further in space, keyboard shortcut one. We'll give these now a negative value of 15 instead of 10. Let's move them a little bit further away and in fact, keyboard shortcut one, I'm going to go ahead and raise those up in the scene a little bit so they look like they're a little bit further away. If we come back to this other view and use our orbit tool, we can get a sense of how big things are and where they are in space. In fact, it looks like Windsor is floating off of the grass a little bit, but that really doesn't matter because the way it's going to appear is that he's actually standing on that. Finally, let's go ahead and get some trees into the scene. We'll come back to this window view. First let me select the Layer Adjustment tool. And we're simply going to import some stock trees that come with Anime Studio Pro. We'll go to Import, Scenery. Our dialog box or option box opens. Then we've got some varieties of trees we can choose. We'll pick something that is, is passable for our need right here. Let's use tree number five. Obviously there's more attractive trees we could make, but I wanted to show this is a fast way to go ahead and build some of your scene with existing content. Well, we need to push the trees back in Z space as well. This is tree five. So we'll go ahead and give this a value of something like negative 10, which is where the building is used to be. So negative 10, that goes back. Obviously it needs to be a little bit larger. So let's go ahead and use keyboard shortcut two for the scale of that. I'll go ahead and drag the corner handle on that and we'll make that a little bit larger. I'll press keyboard shortcut one and we'll go ahead and move that layer around now so we can see it right there. And I'll lower it a little bit so it looks like it's closer to us than the buildings are. Now this is where we need to get into some very specific behaviors of the tree because we're going to duplicate this. This is not a case where working with particles is desirable and in fact we're going to want to actually only have a few trees and not a whole host of them like we had in the particle section. So I'll come to tree, double click on it. Our dialog box for that layer opens up and what we'll want to do is come down here to our options and have rotate to face camera and select OK. Now in this view, we'll go ahead and come back to our orbit tool. The primary reason for this is, of course, that if we don't have the tree rotating to the camera that we actually render out of, 
you can tell that it's flat, just like we see winds are disappearing right there. Just not a good scene. So we're going to have the trees and Windsor rotate to meet the camera. Now since we've created that effect with the tree, I'll come back to our layer movement tool. We'll select this other view and now I'm simply going to duplicate this tree. It automatically changes the number of it so we're now at tree 6. I'm going to move this over here a little bit further and obviously these trees are duplicates. We could bring in new ones but we're going to invoke a little function which is kind of nice that will blur them as we do our final render. We'll go ahead and duplicate tree 6. That will now become tree 7. Actually I want some trees over here on the right side. We'll repeat that process again and I'm going to go ahead and drag my scene a little bit and we'll do that one more time. So we wind up with quite a few trees right here and we could stagger them back in space if we want. I won't do that right at the moment. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and set up the camera moves and the final render settings to get our camera moving through our scene in Anime Studio Pro.